Hello and welcome to Super Great Kids Stories. Wise tales from storytellers around the world which will make you laugh and sometimes cry. Recommended for ages 5 to 105. I'm Kim and I love stories. Hello Super Great Kids and how are you? I'm very happy because Super Great Kids Stories are organising some live shows for the next few months. More news about that in a couple of weeks. Today's story is from Norway, a rocky country in northern Europe with many steep peaked mountains. The story contains some brave goats and a rather nasty troll. It's told by Jason Buck, the teller of the old woman and the pig story. A little warning, it does have a mean troll in it who is rather convincingly scary, but it also has a happy, splashy ending. Hooray! Before we welcome Jason, can you have a little think about this? In this story, as you may know, some goats are stopped from trotting across a bridge by a mean and bullying troll. And my question is, how do you think you deal with a troll who was trying to stop you from getting where you wanted to go? Have a little think about that while we have a quick chat with the grown-ups. Hello, super great kids. I'm back. I wonder how you deal with a nasty troll. Would you try to trick it? Maybe placing banana skins on the bridge? Or would you use your words and flatter it, charm it into letting you pass? Or would you fetch a grown-up to help you? Or would you shame it? Sort of like this. Come on, trolly roly poly Oh, I mean, troll diddly roll. You know that's not a nice way to treat someone. What would your mum think of you being so mean? You should be ashamed of yourself. Now, are you going to let me pass or am I going to have to fetch my pet pack of wolves to persuade you to make better choices? Something like that? Do ask your grown-ups after this story if they've ever had to stand up to any mean trolls and how they did it. Now, are you ready for our story from Norway? Let's give a warm welcome to Jason Buck. Hello, my name is Jason. I'm a storyteller. All you need to do is just sit back and imagine the pictures from the story that I will tell you. Once upon a time, there were three brothers. They weren't ordinary brothers because these brothers were goats. Three goat brothers. Billy goats, you'd call them. Male goats are billy goats and female goats are nanny goats. And they didn't live on a farm. They were wild goats. Out on the mountains they lived, roaming up and down the mountainsides and across the alpine fields. There, with their little hooves, they would scamper up and down the mountainsides, balancing on the tiny crags and little precipices in ways that would make you or me feel sick to our stomachs to look down those dizzying heights. But of course, being a wild animal, it means you have to look for your own food. If you live on a farm, the farmer brings you the food and either pops it down into a trough or you've got lovely fields from which to graze or browse upon. But the three wild goat brothers, the three billy goats, who all shared a surname, the surname Gruff, they had to go and find their own food. And out they would go up and down the mountainsides and across the alpine meadows, and always in the distance there was somewhere where the grass looked fresh and the bushes had leaves that looked even more tempting. So off they would go trip and trap and up and down the mountainsides and over boulders and skipping through the waters and the rivers until they found the places where the food was best for them. And once they'd munched all the food up there, they'd move on. They'd move on to find somewhere where the food was fresh and nice once more. 
It so happened that one day, the three brothers, the three goats, the three billy goats, the three billy goats gruff, happened upon a place where in the distance they could see a beautiful meadow that was filled with thick, lush green grass and where herbs and flowers sprouted up in the summer. And at the edges of that field, at the edges of that meadow, there were the hedges and the bushes. Oh, it looked tempting. Lots of lovely stuff to nibble and munch on if you're a goat. They looked and they talked to each other. <coughs> Let's go over there, said the middle billy goat brother. Let's go over there and let's enjoy that delicious grass. Oh, yes, said the youngest. Let's go over there. Yes, said the oldest. Yes. He was the biggest of the billy goats. He was huge. He had great horns that spiralled and curled up from his head and curved over his back. He was big and he was strong and he had a long goatee beard that hung from his chin. The middle one was, unsurprisingly, middle-sized compared to the other two. Now, his horns were not as big as his older brother's, but he still had a proud pair of horns that sprouted from his forehead and they were just beginning to curl up and over his back. And the youngest one, who was just a kid, and because that's what you call them, baby goats are called kids. He was just a kid and he had little tiny horns that just poked up like little spikes from his forehead. The three of them talked and looked and decided that they would go to this other meadow on the other side of the mountain. But there was a problem. Between this side of the mountain and the other side of the mountain was a great and strong and fast-flowing river. The current of the water was far too strong and would have swept them away if they tried to wade or swim through it. But happily, there was a bridge. Now this bridge had been built by people people like you and people like me. It was built once upon a time a long time ago and the people had used it to walk from this side of the mountain over to the other side of the mountain. But again there was another problem. Not only did the river rage as a torrent beneath this bridge but also beneath this bridge lived a troll. Long ago the people had stopped crossing the bridge because every time they crossed their feet, tip, tap, tip, tap, they would go as they went over the bridge and the troll would come out and would grab them and... <laughs> he would gobble them up. So the people had stopped travelling across this bridge long, long ago. Now the three brothers, the three billy goats gruff, they knew about the troll under the bridge. And so they talked in little whispery goat voices. <coughs> until they came up with a plan. First to cross the bridge was the youngest of the brothers, the youngest of the three billy goats gruff. And off he went, down the mountainside and approached the bridge and nervously looked over the edge. Far, far down below there was the river rushing by. And he put one hoof and the other over the bridge. His little hooves went trip, trap, trip, trap as he went over the wooden bridge. Now when he was halfway across, what should happen but from underneath the bridge came a great booming voice. Who's that trip trapping over my bridge, said a voice. And up from the edge of that bridge, leering over the edge, pulling himself up onto the bridge, was the enormous troll. It had a huge nose that hung down below its lips and below its chin, vast ears that dangled onto its shoulders. It had a head of messy hair that sprouted like bushes from the top of his head. His jaw was slung forward and great big tusks protruded. He wore a pair of shabby old jeans that were tied together round the waist with a huge bit of old rope that had once come from a pirate ship. There he came up, wiping his greasy hands on his big tummy. And he stood on the bridge and he peered down at the little billy goat gruff and said, Who's that trip trapping over my bridge? And the little billy goat looked up. 
It's me, me, the youngest of the three billy goats gruff. Me. What are you doing here? said the troll. I'm trying to cross over the bridge to the other side so I can be in that lovely meadow and munch all that lovely grass. Well, I'm going to eat you instead, said the troll. Oh, no, said the little kid. Don't eat me. I tell you what, if you spare me, you can eat my brother, who's bigger than me and much more toothsome and delicious. I'm just all bones and hooves at the moment because I'm too young. Ooh, this gave the troll something to think about. Right, he said, go on then. I'll have a go at your brother. Go on, get over to the other side. And so the little goat... galloped over, and there he was, the youngest of the three billy goats gruff, there in that lovely meadow munching on that grass and nervously looking back to see what would happen as the troll tucked himself back down under the bridge and waited for the next goat to cross. Only a few minutes passed until the middle billy goat gruff crossed the bridge. Now when he came onto this bridge, his hooves were bigger and heavier. On to the bridge he came, and it was as you might expect as he was halfway across when suddenly from underneath the bridge came that great and booming voice, Who's that trip trapping over my bridge? Up came the troll, and there, standing in his rough old jeans with his rope tied round his waist and his big tusks and his huge nose and his vast ears and his messy hair, he peered down at the middle billy goat gruff brother. Yes, indeed, he was much bigger than the younger one. The little one was right. There was much more to eat on this billy goat. What are you doing here? said the troll. Bleh, said the billy goat. Bleh, bleh. I am the middle Billy Goat Gruff brother, and I want to cross your bridge and get to the other side and join my brother so I can also munch that delicious grass and I can nibble on those bushes and those leaves. Well, I'll tell you what, said the troll. Instead of that, I'm going to eat you. Wait, said the middle Billy Goat. Don't eat me. Wait for my brother. My older brother is much bigger and much more muscly than me. There will be a feast to eat on him if you wait for him to come across and instead let me go and join my little brother on the other side. <sighs> Thought the troll. Yeah, go on then, go on, get you across, get over there. And so the middle billy goat gruff brother trip trapped across the bridge the rest of the way and joined his little brother and the two of them began to munch on the grass and nibble on the bushes and mm, sample those delicious wild herbs in the field the troll crept back down under the bridge and waited it was only a few minutes until the last the oldest and the biggest of the billy goat gruff brothers began to cross the bridge his hooves were the biggest, he was the heaviest, and he strode across the bridge, wagging his billy goat beard and shaking his great long horns. And as you would expect, as he was halfway across, out from under the bridge, came a great booming voice. Who's that trip trapping over my bridge? Up came the troll. This was the final one. This was the one he'd been waiting for. And sure enough, this goat was huge, and it was muscled, and it would indeed be a feast, even for a troll of his size. What are you doing on my bridge? said the troll. Bleh, said the biggest billy goat gruff brother. I'm walking over your bridge to join my brothers on the other side. I'm going there to eat the grass and to nibble on the wild herbs. Bleh. No, you're not, said the troll. Unless you've got any other big brothers coming behind you, I'm going to eat you. Oh, no. Bleh. I am the last of the billy goats, Gruff. Bleh. Right, said the troll. Dinner time. And he started to walk towards the goat. But instead of running, instead of panicking, the goat 
began to pour against the wood of the bridge. He scraped his hoof on the floor, and he lowered his great head with his huge horns, and as the troll began to open up his arms, thinking of how delicious this billy goat would be, the goat charged. Head down, horns up, all his muscles bunched. That great billy goat smashed into the troll and caught him right in the tummy, tossing him high into the air. Up, up, up went the troll. Oh, no. And then down, down, down. Until he splashed into the river far, far below. And then the biggest, the oldest, Billy Goat Gruff Brother continued across the bridge until he reached the other side. There he joined his middle brother and his youngest brother, and the three of them lived happily ever after. Oh, thank you very much, Jason, for that marvellous story. Doesn't Jason make good noises? I like the little goat's hooves and their voices as they bleat to each other. And the giant splash and the troll's voice, which makes him seem enormous. I wonder if you could make up a funny troll voice. You could make it very deep. Or maybe very high. Could you draw a picture of the troll? I'm not very good at drawing, but I'll tell you what. I'll have a go and I'll post a troll picture for you to colour on our Facebook page. Now, we couldn't run this podcast without you and your kind help. So, it's time for me to dig deep into my bag of happies and say thank you to some new owlets who've recently flown into our nest and generously subscribe to our podcast. A big hello to superfans August, who is six, and Luna, who is three, from Helensburg in Australia. They are new Apple subscribers to our podcast. They've listened to every single story, including all the super great scary stories. They particularly like the Velvet Ribbon story. If any of you are Apple subscribers, we're not able to see your names. So if you'd like a mention and you're kindly helping to support us through Apple, do let us know and we can say hello to you on the podcast. And hello to Apple subscriber Jameson, who is six from Phoenix in Arizona, who is also a big fan of Super Great Kids stories. Thank you very much for subscribing, Jameson. And hello and welcome to brand new Patreon subscriber and superfan Francesca from New Orleans in Louisiana. What a lovely place to live, Francesca. Thank you very much for supporting us. I'm glad you're enjoying the stories. And thanks so much to all of you who are subscribing and helping to keep our podcast ticking over. Every mickle makes a muckle, as my grandma used to say. If you'd like to subscribe, you can donate on Patreon, Apple, or give a donation on Ko-fi. See our website, supergreatkidsstories.com, for more details. A big thanks to Jane, who is seven and a half in Washington, D.C., for your Ko-fi donation and very kind words. And thank you, too, to everyone who wrote thoughtful and generous reviews on Apple Podcasts, including... Brody, who is five, and Kira, who is three, who are on a family road trip around North America. And they're enjoying listening to the stories while they travel. Now, lots of you have been drawing up a storm and sending us pictures inspired by our stories to post on our Facebook page. So I've dipped into my mailbag and here are some thanks for some lovely pictures. Thank you to five-year-old Bear from Sandy in Vermont in the US, who has sent us a marvellously terrifying picture of Mama Draga, who has green eyes and sharp teeth and scary hair and clawed fingers and toes. A super great drawing, Bear. Thank you. 
And thanks to seven-year-old Mazzy from Colorado, who's living in Lagos in Nigeria. Thank you for your lovely letter and your picture of the girls chomping on bits of sky, inspired by the story from West Africa, why the sky is so high up and far away. Thank you, Mazzy. Lucky you having that experience of living in a different culture. And thanks to six-year-old Lukey from Lake Oswego in Oregon, who sent us a really lovely drawing of the magic orange tree story from Haiti, with a beautiful, enormous orange in front of the tree and a green-eyed child standing beneath it. Just lovely, Lukey. Thank you for sending it to us. And a big thanks to Millie, who is five, from Willow Park in Texas, who sent us a lovely picture of Mama Draga, who is enormous and has long spiky fingers, and a smiling Rosetta next to her. Thank you, Millie. And thank you too to Maisie from Denver in Colorado, who sent us a picture of red-eyed Mama Draga and spoilt Angelina, both in the bottom of the well. And I think Angelina is pulling a horrible face at Mama Draga. Brilliant, Maisie. Thank you for sending this picture. That's it for this week. More thank yous next week. If you'd like to see these pictures, go to our Facebook page where we have a gallery of all your imaginative drawings. Facebook.com forward slash super great kids stories. And if you'd like to send us a picture inspired by one of our stories, then attach it to Facebook Messenger or go to our website, supergreatkidsstories.com and scroll to the bottom where it says, attach your super great picture here. That's it for now. Keep telling your stories and singing your songs. See you soon. This story was recorded at Wardour Studios in London. Music